I'm Robin Vincent and welcome to Molten Music Technology. Today we're looking at the Microfreak from Arturia. It's had a bit of an upgrade. A version 2 firmware has been released which gives it a couple of extra features that we're going to look at. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well why haven't I done a proper, a proper deep level review of the Microfreak? Uh, no reason really. I just kind of haven't found the time so far. But in a nutshell, to give you my 30 second overview, the Microfreak is an extraordinary, interesting, fascinating little synthesizer with probably one of the worst opening presets of any synth ever. But other than that, it's fantastic. It's packed full of oscillators. It's got an extraordinarily fabulous sounding filter and an interesting modulation matrix that you have to undo manually. The keyboard thing is both fantastic Quirky, interesting, expressive, and really annoying. <laughs> the oscillators inside give you a huge, versatile range of sounds, and yet a lot of them, because they're stolen from Eurorack, just don't really fit in the keyboard synth paradigm that well. But those things aside, it's one of the most interesting and quirky little desktop synths that you can get. And I've used it live, and I've used it in a lot of other places, and it's a thoroughly enjoyable experience. Now with version 2 it's not a whole new synth at all, they've just introduced a couple of features and all you need to do is pop over to the website and download it via their MIDI control app. The version I'm running here is the very last beta so there is a slim possibility that there's some sort of change between this and the actual release version. But what the heck, what can you do? So update number one, they've stuffed in a noise oscillator. It's not a noise oscillator that you mix in with the other oscillators. No, no, this is an oscillator all by itself. You get to it via the oscillator type knob, this first of the orange four. Wipe it all the way to the end and you get to noise. Come back, it momentarily gives you a picture of a, a kind of a hi-hat going because it's that kind of vibe that it's after. Although I'm not entirely sure that I can get it to do that. And what you get is this. Yes, lots of noise. Now, of course, we have our three modification knobs here. Under Wave, you have the noise type. Now, it goes from a white noise. through to a more metallic noise. Now you can hear a tone in there, that's because they've also mixed in a sine triangle wave kind of waveform thing in order to give it a bit of, I don't know, something to latch onto. But that doesn't have to be there, and this the last knob actually changes the balance of that. So this is pure noise. The middle knob then decimates the noise, I think it is. In interesting ways. Interesting. It gets very interesting when you route it through the filter. Stick on an arpeggiator to get it moving about. Stick the R to the cutoff. Thank you. 
What it does give, and what I imagine the reason, the intention behind it, is to put a little bit of noise engineering in there. Those modules from noise engineering that are full of noise that you can shape and play with, percussive, uh, crazy, weird, decimated and pulled apart bits of noise that are forever being modulated, ever changing about. You could create a sequence of different changing, ever being modulated types and balances that could create a very expressive percussion line. Feature number two, chords. Now I know there's an oscillator inside that's called chords, but this is not that. All this is is a chord memory. If you hold the paraphonic button, press four notes, that then becomes a chord on a single press. away again, hold it down, in fact I have no idea how many notes it takes. Feature number three is scales. You get to that in the utility menu and you can scroll down to miscellaneous, hit that, go down to scale. Now, I can scale that to major. So there's no longer a minor note being activated. It's all major, minor. Harmonic minor, Dorian, Mixolydian, Mixolydian, and Blues. And Pentatonic. The idea being that you can then set the scale and you can play a bunch of notes and it's never going to be wrong. I'm finding that every time I choose another scale there's a slight glitch. There. There. Which I can only assume is going to be ironed out with the proper release. But if not, Arturia, take note, there's a little glitch. There. <laughs> There's also a root note option, so you can change the, the, I suppose, the transposition of that scale. Where that scale starts. The next new feature is in the sequencer, and that's the ability to copy pattern A to pattern B. I know, right? Isn't that extraordinary? So you don't have to, if you just want to do a slight variation between the two patterns, you don't have to re-record the whole thing into pattern B with just the little change. So now if I select, all right, stick it in sequencer mode, select A, hit record, which is here somewhere, 
I can do my 16 steps. Like so, have that play. Now if I hold A and hold then hold B, it'll flash and it'll go, it's copied. So now B also has the same pattern. So if I go to B and put it into record, I can step through and stick some other notes in. Like so. So I can have A playing. Swap to B. Easy. And the last big new feature is the ability to clear the modulation matrix because you find yourself in this all the time. Like I'm going to stick that to that and turn that up. And then I'm going to put this to wave and turn that up. I'm going to put this to here and turn that up. And the that LFO is also going to go to uh, there, turn that up. And pressure is going to go there, turn that up. And you get all this stuff plugged into your patch. But if you wanted to change it, you'd have to go through each one individually and turn them back off again. Whereas now, with a shift and a hold of the encoder, and it's all gone. It's all gone. Not entirely sure how long you're supposed to hold that encoder for, but you sort of it told you something happened when it did, but you're just going to have to go with it. So there you go. That's five new features for the Arturia Microfreak. Tons of other bug fixes and bits and pieces that they've chipped away at as well, no doubt. But as it is, there it is. The quirkiest, most interesting little desktop synth there is has just got a slightly bit better with the version 2 firmware. There you go. I hope that was helpful, and in the meantime, go and make some tunes. <laughs>